Hello everybody, this is Bud and look at this, I have VirtualBox prepared here with a virtual machine. Uh, I installed a base configuration of uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Distribution doesn't really matter, this is really definitely not a distribu distro review or anything like that, but I kind of needed a virtual machine to be able to do this video because we will have to do a bunch of logging in and logging out to make sure that stuff is working. Uh, and the stuff that we want to get working is this. This is, by the way, uh, this is just base configuration, base installation of Tumbleweed here. So um, I, I opted for the generic desktop uh, installation, which gives you just IceWM as the only option in the, this list. Then uh, I have went ahead and installed i3 window manager, Thunar file manager, and Leafpad text editor. Those are the only three applications I have installed uh, after the, the base installation. Um, this video we will try to create our own custom entry to this uh, uh, X session list here. And that custom entry will say desktop-systemd, which in turn will start a session in the way that I like, you know, where we use systemd to start i3 will be where we start in this video. We will start i3 and we will also make sure that the Thunar uh, daemon is running, all that with systemd. And we will also make sure that we have an entry in this list here. That is of course not really important or it doesn't make any sense if you don't use a desktop manager like LightDM here for example and I know I, I used to not use that myself I used to only use like XinitRC but I think most people actually use a desktop manager like LightDM or, or I don't know what the GNOME version is but whatever. Um, and even if you don't use it, most of the stuff in this video will apply anyways. And I think I will start with this actually to create this uh, desktop uh, file that is needed uh, to get an entry in this list. So without further ado, let's log in to this virtual machine. So this is IceWM, which I have to say is a great uh, baseline uh, desktop, definitely. Um, so those um, entries in that uh, X session or what to call it menu I know exactly where they are located we can find them here in the file system USR share then it's way down here X sessions and here we can see those three uh, or files with the same name as those entries and these are you create the file in this directory to create an entry in that menu basically we can open the i3 version uh, one here uh, and we can also see that it's a quite simple little desktop file that we need to create if we want to create our own so let's just try to do that but one problem here this is a bit annoying here but whatever we cannot create documents here because we need sudo privileges to create stuff in, in this uh, USR share accessions uh, directory. And I have found uh, that the easiest way here to do this at the moment, we will fix this in the next video, I thought actually. But just to show you, this will not work. So sudo leafpad um, USR share X sessions and then we call it uh, desktop dash system d dot desktop if i try to do this we get an error that leafpad cannot open display i'm, I'm not sure how there is probably a way to get around this but um, uh, to be able to use sudo here i i don't know it from from the top of my head uh, but i do know that it works if we open vim a terminal application doesn't need any displays and then it works so vim this file and then we just copy this stuff I select it here middle click here <laughs> uh, because I'm not a power vim user but 
know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> uh, desktop system D. Uh, we can remove try exec. And then we can leave exec to execute the i3 command as it is. Xlight DM desktop name. I, I think we changed this. I think this is the name in that menu. Uh, so uh, we say desktop system D and desktop names. I'm not sure what that this is really, but let's just do the same thing here. There. Save that. And now we should have an entry in that list. Desktop system D. Selecting that, if you remembered, I never changed the exec, exec command, so it, it is basically just a renamed version of i3 here, but just to verify that it works here, we log in with that password. And it works. We are now logged into an i3 session. Cool. Okay, that's kind of step one here. Uh, step two will be to create a systemd uh, unit to that will start the thunar daemon so we just start thunar from a terminal it looks like this and as you can see it kind of occupies the, the terminal if we want to, to start another instance we have to open a new terminal and do it again or you know you could also do this with key bindings blah 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 but what i want to do is um, That's interesting. Ah, this must mean, or hmm. wonder why it didn't close that window there. It should have done that. Uh, I wonder if the Thunar Demon is running now. Thunar. No. Okay, but you can also start Thunar in Demon mode. Then it doesn't open a window, but this means that now. See, now we don't have to create a new terminal every time. So that's one benefit. But another uh, good thing with this is that all open uh, Thunar instances will share uh, lots, of the, lots of resources. So this is a lot more efficient, especially when it comes to memory uh, consumption, to start it like this. If you uh, are often having multiple file manager windows open, and I usually do. I, I can I can have as much as like five, six uh, open um, Thunar instances at the same time. And when you have that, then it makes a big difference uh, to, to start it like this. But it's also actually faster to spawn Windows now when we are running it in a Thunar uh, or as a daemon. It doesn't do have to do all the initialization. One drawback in quotation mark, or there is there are actually a couple of drawbacks. Maybe I should mention them that now when we uh, um, all these windows belong to the daemon process so if we close that process it will close all windows so it means that if you manage to crash this process it will just destroy all windows all thunar windows um, another kind of a bit awkward uh, uh, drawback with this when it comes to thunar is uh, when you change settings uh, then it gets weird when you have a bunch of multiple windows open and you open the settings, you change something, but then does that apply to all uh, open Thunars and stuff like that? It's, I have found that it is sometimes, uh, uh, um, sometimes it's good to close all windows, make sure that you only have one window open when you edit configuration, like setting key bindings or, or whatever. Uh, but you, you all in all, I think this is very well worth uh, using um, just for the fact that it, it feels like everything gets faster and uses less memory, and that's good things, you know. Um, and I want to create a systemd unit that more or less does this, starts the, the daemon. <clears throat> I will explain why you would like to do that, but that's what we're going to do now. And to create a custom system D unit, uh, you uh, place them in. You can open a leaf pad actually. Leaf pad. And let's make it floating. 
Um, you want to save these files, we can start by that. Save as, and then in home directory, config systemd user. This is where you want to place them, and if this directory doesn't exist, it might very well not exist, you need to create them. systemd slash user in dot config. Uh, here we save this as thunar daemon dot service. Very important that you uh, that it is the dot service file extension. Uh, save and then uh, systemd unit files are in uh, INI format or in any format so uh, consists of sections and keys and I, I like to do it like this first enter the section so there is a unit section and there's a service section and the unit section yeah whatever we don't have to explain everything here but it usually contain a description field which is a description file manager daemon whatever um, and the service uh, section at least contains the exec start field which is the command to execute and that is thunar daemon There, now we have created our system D uh, um, system D um, unit, which is a service unit, um, and now we can start it by using sys system CTL. Notice here, don't use sudo; it's important. System CTL user start dunar daemon. And now, if everything worked, this should be starter. We can verify that by looking at the status of this. And we can see it's active and running. And that in turn means that we should be able to start doing our like this. And you see, now it doesn't occupy the terminal because they, they belong to the, to, the, to the daemon, which is controlled by system, in turn, controlled by system D, meaning that we can also uh, stop this from systemd here, so systemctl user stop. Uh, that's good, we have created that. Um, but our custom desktop um, entry there, we wanted to be able to start uh, a systemd controlled i3 session. And that means we want to create a new service here that starts uh, i3 basically. So. Uh, let's just create a new file here, make it floating, because I <laughs> prefer to have it floating. Um, same thing, unit, description, uh, i3, tiling, window, manager, whatever, service, exec, store, equals i3. Yeah, that's that's all you need uh, here to get started. But uh, just a heads up, we will uh, extend spe specifically this i3 service file here. We will extend that quite a lot. So now we save it. Uh, we save it as i3.service, I guess. Come on. There. Save. So now we can start that. But you cannot start i3 service when you're running a window manager. Yeah, I know it doesn't work. But we don't. Oh, oh wrong. I meant to do this. Systemctl user start i3. Um, this actually failed. But there is no indication of that. Um, but if we look at the status, we will see that it failed. Uh, yeah, the, it's failed and then um, we scroll down here, we can see the last error message that the process printed was another window manager is already running, so it doesn't work. Um, and of course we are already running a window manager so it doesn't work, uh, but what we want to do is uh, actually have this as the 
command to execute with our desktop file systemctl user start well i3 uh, so yet again we uh, use uh, sudo bin usr share x sessions desktop systemd dot desktop enter the password and then we say system CPL user start i3 save that and now we log out super shift e yes <clears throat> and see if this worked make sure that desktop system d is selected and then we say this and it just brought us back here it didn't work let's investigate let's let's log into the iswm session and here you can see why i wanted to do this in a virtual machine right um, open this guy again and then we try to find leaf pad or that was actually not what i wanted to do i wanted to open x term and then we can uh, do that system ctl status uh, i3 and see the last uh, error messages printed now and this is actually a different error message remember, remember the last time it uh, prompted us that another window manager is already running but now it's a fail to intern wmsn atom it's uh, quite <laughs> not easy to understand what that means uh, and i to be honest i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure but uh, uh, i know how we can make this work and i also know uh, what the actual root cause of the issues are and that is that system d is not aware of the current environment it's not aware of uh, the important x uh, session environments and uh, variables and stuff like that uh, in short what we need to do is import the current environment into system d uh, to make sure that uh, processes started by system d uh, have the correct environment set up and when that is done this will work uh, to do that we just have to ex execute this command before we start any uh, uh, systemd user services here. So dbus, uh, don't remember it's uh, the update activation environment. And then you also pass systemd command line option, of course, very important here, uh, but also the all command line uh, option here. What this does is it will take the current environment and then it will uh, update all active dbus services. Uh, so update all currently running dbus services uh, with the new and with the current environment. If you add the option system D, it will also do the same thing for system D. And that is what we want to do here now, but it doesn't hurt at all to also do this for dbus services. Uh, the all command line option, it means that it will um, import all environment variables. If you don't include this, uh, then you have to specify a list of environment variables that you want to import. But we, it's easiest to just do all, but if you really know what you're doing, it's, it's a bit more secure, I guess, to, to not import everything. And it might also be slightly faster, but this is, this is blazing fast, this command here can see it takes no time at all to, to execute so that is what we need to do before we execute that uh, um, command in our uh, desktop file and now I want to do it like this uh, it's a bit um, offbeat maybe but it is worth doing it like this in my experience first let's do this export this is also all the users environment uh, variables and this is what we import into system D, basically. Here I want to look at the path environment variable. And yeah, I can see now that we have home local bin in our path. Probably it's because I forgot to remove it from the profile. 
go to put profile because I think I do know okay I'm not really sure where that local bin comes from but make sure that or whatever you know about this how the path works you know I like to add this to profile uh, equals home local bin colon path Make sure that local bin is in your path. Let's just say that, but you, you know what I mean. Um, then we create a file in local bin. New file. Make that a shell script. POSIX shell. It's fine. And here we add that dbus uh, update activation environment. And we also add system CTL user star and here it's also very much recommended that you use the command line option wait and i3.service dot service is actually not needed here it will default to, to the service uh, type if, it, if you don't specify it but it's it's good practice in my opinion to add the extension when you're using systemd like this um, this also, by the way, this file here that we create now, let's uh, save it, save as, and then let's see, put local bin, and here we save it as desktop init. This is more or less a proxy for xinit rc, so if you are using xinit instead, then the these are the lines you want to add to xinit to, to make sure that you start uh, assistant D user service correctly <laughs> you only need to do this once also now after this is done and we start i3 everything we start from this point on will have the correct environment so so we don't have to worry about this anymore um, and now when we have this file last two things we need to do is make sure that it is uh, executable we could actually to verify that we can just do an echo hello and then we exit this script here and then schmod plus x local bin desktop init and now we should be able to do desktop init uh, the desktop ini i named it don't want it to be called that but it says hello Okay, that actually, no, whatever, let's call it desktop ini. It doesn't matter. Okay, it works. Save that. And now, for the last time, I promise, we will do sudo vim usr share x sessions desktop systemd.desktop. Enter the password. And instead of having this command here we have that command in our desktop ini file so now we just replace this with desktop ini and as you can see we don't have to specify the full path or anything here because this file is kind of started after you have logged in uh, and it will have the users environment like light dm has the user environment the environment variable and the path environment variable so it will actually find the correct file here and i kind of think this is good uh, now uh, because this means it will only work this will this setup here will only work if the user have this file available in their path so if you would create a, another user on on this machine uh, maybe we can try that later on here um, not in this video I didn't mean to do that yeah because i am in a terminal I meant to do this uh, if you would do uh, try to log in as a different user and select this entry it would wouldn't work because it, they will not have that um, file available in their path but for us everything is working correctly now we got i3 but we started it from system D this is uh, very very good um, last time I wanted last thing I want to do now is um, 
also start that uh, Thunar uh, bid of Thunar. I just want to make sure it isn't running here. The last thing I want to do is start that Thunar daemon service uh, together with i3. Uh, so we open leafpad and then we select open file and let's browse to it config system d user i3.service and here we can see we also have thrown our daemon service it's not active or uh, enabled or anything but we can start it from a different service if we want to like we can make it kind of a soft dependency by doing this once Thunar daemon dot service and here later if we, if we want uh, the this i3 service to have more soft in quotation mark dependencies uh, you just add them here uh, as a space separated list like this so yeah, imagine this is a different service here but whatever we can take that in a later video we will also make this more advanced later on as we go uh, but for now this is good enough uh, and it will work good enough for now <laughs> uh, let's try it close this and do pit of tuner again it isn't running uh, log out yes box log in Open a terminal, PID of Thunar. Now we get a PID because Thunar now was started in that system D process um, in daemon mode. So we should be able to do this without the uh, terminal getting occupied. And also, just, just a short note here, it is slower to start Thunar the first time, even if you're running the, the daemon, it needs to initialize. Uh, the window and stuff like that the first time you launch the command but consecutive commands is much faster um, so now it is actually working there are lots of improvements we can do to this uh, just this small configuration we have already done here uh, one is that uh, if we do this I think we can can test this I haven't really tried this but it should should be like this if we open leaf pad again and uh, open our i3 service file and then we we can comment this out and you can do that with a sharp symbol just like in shell scripts like that um, close that log out also or before we log out let's verify that it is running system system ctl user status Thunar daemon it is active it is running because we start uh, and it was started by i3 it wants this um, or actually now when i think about it this will not work what i'm trying to do now i will do it anyways and then i will explain what i first thought would happen but I, now i just realize what actually will happen now we commented out that line and now when i log in we shouldn't have a uh, Thunar user status Thunar daemon and no now it's a failed that's also weird yeah it probably just stopped there when we logged out that was what I didn't consider that we actually logged out and then of course it stops everything um, but uh, we can do this in a much more uh, um, um, so, so it does this properly by grouping um, different ser uh, systemd services you can group different services into targets um, and then we can tell i3 the i3 service that this is like the main service when this is closed close all other uh, uh, graphical applications gracefully that that is started by system d and stuff like that we, we will improve this uh, configuration quite a lot here in the coming videos but this video is by far the most complicated one to to just initialize this um, and now when you think about it it, it isn't such a big deal really 
uh, but this is like what we would build upon and this has been um, there are like advancements done uh, in the system d space and, and whatnot uh, so so this is now quite easy to do especially with that uh, magic d bus activation uh, command you know um, update activation environment um, many guides that you find on internet um, will use a different method of doing this um, but that is actually deprecated it's uh, i don't remember if it's system ctl and then <coughs> user and then i think there is something called import environment or something like that yeah here it is import em environment and that kind of works the same way you do that import environment and if you don't specify any other argument then it will import all of the environment variables into systemd but that has been uh, deprecated uh, and i don't know it will probably get removed i don't know um, and this no matter what, uh, this is actually better since it also updates uh, the system D or, or the D bus services as well. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, this is quite cool that we can do this. And also, now we didn't make use of that, but in the latest version of i3, I know I mentioned it in my big yearly i3 update video that. Uh, it was added a, a snippet of code to the last version of i3 that uh, actually notifies system D when it's ready. And that also makes a big difference here, uh, we will see later on. So we can, we can really make this a, a, a very, very fine-tuned uh, desktop session on when uh, certain specific uh, uh, processes starts and stuff like that because there are some processes we will want to start that is uh, very uh, uh, where it's very important that i3 is not just started but it's also that uh, that it's also uh, ready so to speak that the ipc is ready for for communication and stuff like that um, and we can actually make sure that is the case with this new functionality. But whatever, we take that in later videos. Hopefully this video triggered your, your <laughs> curiosity for this, uh, if, if it uh, hadn't already. Uh, I cannot um, uh, uh, overstate, or un I, I don't know, how nice I think this is. And there just this thing that you can do this user status and get just like the latest uh, error messages and stuff like that but you can also do a lot more comp uh, advanced uh, logging of the different services started and everything and all of it is taken care of by systemd it's it's very good this is very good have a great day everybody see you in the next video